What's up guys, Reckless here, welcome back to another video. So, the new three player activity onslaught is almost upon us. Actually, as of this video, it's less than two weeks away. For those who don't know, onslaught is the new defensive horde mode activity coming to Destiny 2 on April 9th, with the release of Into the Light, which is free to everybody. If you guys would like to know more information about Into the Light, onslaught, and the reprised weapons coming back to D2, then you can do so by clicking on the video at the top right of the screen right now and at the end of this video. However, today we are going to talk about what I feel is going to be the best Strand Hunter build for this new game mode and why? Because crowd control is going to be very, very important in Onslaught. But before we continue on with the video, this video is brought to you by Hyper Controllers. They are the first company to ever put Hall Effect thumbsticks inside a PS5 controller, which means no stick drift. You can customize your own controller or shop for a pre-made one. You can customize a controller for PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC with custom shells, extra paddles or buttons with a remappable chip, Hall Effect sensors, mouse click bumpers and triggers, and much more. Hyper Controllers offers a one year warranty on all of their controllers. You can check them out by going to hypercontrollers.com and you can use promo code RXRP to save 5% off your order. Okay, so I'll be going over the subclass to include the abilities, aspects, fragments, what weapons to use, the artifact mods, your exotic, the mods on your armor, and the stats that you want to have. If there is a specific section you guys are actually interested in, timestamps will be listed down below, so you can go ahead and check that out. So, let's go ahead and start with the subclass. We're on the Strand Hunter, so we are going to be using Silk Strike. For our abilities, we're going to be using Gambler's Dodge, which recharges your melee after dodging. You can use whatever jump you want. Threaded Spike is the only melee we have. And for this build, we're going to be using Shackle Grenades in order to suspend enemies. For the aspects, we're going to be using Widow Silk in order to give us an additional grenade charge. And then Whirling Maelstrom in order to get that um, Strand Tornado going. Coming down to the fragments, we're going to be using Thread of Generation, which dealing damage generates grenade energy. Then we have Thread of Isolation, which land in rapid precision hits emits a severing burst from the target. Thread of Continuity, which suspend, unravel, and sever effects applied to targets have increased duration. And then finally, Thread of Ascent, which activating your grenade ability reloads your equipped weapon and grants bonus airborne effectiveness and handling for a short duration. Now, for the weapons, you can use whatever weapon that you want, but the benefits that we get from this season's artifact is very, very hard to pass up. And because of that, we are gonna go ahead and use Quicksilver Storm. And primarily, we're gonna be using it for one, it's a strand weapon, and two, the Rocket Tracers, which land in multiple hits, turns your next shot into a Homan Micro Rocket. This is going to be huge, as well as um, Grenade Chaser, which land in multiple rocket loads a grenade, and then you long press to switch into the grenade launcher mode. So that's like two weapons in one. Okay, then we have Wilder Flight. What this is gonna do is help disorient all the enemies with disoriented grenades, and it does have auto-loading holster. So you're gonna blind everything. It's gonna essentially slow everything because it can, none of the enemies can see where they're going, and that's going to be perfect for ad control. And then last but not least, Holobaloo with Volt Shot and Chain Reaction. Chain Reactions get in a buff, and Volt Shot is Volt Shot. You get a kill, you reload, you start jolting everything all over the place. Next, let's go ahead and talk about our artifact. Now, you like I said, you can use whatever weapon you want. You can even use um, all these perks, whatnot, for champions. However, we are going to be suspending everything. So, you don't really need to actually get one of these, but if you did get one of them, at least get Overload Auto Rifle to help out with overloads a little bit. Everything else is just gonna be suspended. Next, we want to go ahead and get Blast Radius, which final blows with rocket launchers and grenade launchers grant armor charge. 
Then you want Origin Perk Specialization 1, which improves the benefits provided by the Sundering, Nano Munitions, and Nanotech Tracer Rocket Origin Traits. This does actually work with Quicksilver Storm. And it does give your Nano Rockets a plus 20% damage increase in PvE. And then you also want to get From Whence You Came, which increases ability damage to Taken and Scorn combatants. Even though Scorn is not an onslaught, there will be Taken enemies. Then we want to come up here and go ahead and grab Torch. Now, even though we are on a um, Strand subclass, you want to grab Torch because most likely there will be at least one Solar um, subclass in your fire team, whether it be a Solar Warlock, a, another Hunter, or a Solar Titan, that will make you Radiant. So, while Radiant, deal increased weapon damage to combatants affected by Strand and Stasis debuffs. Then in the next column, you want to go ahead and get Unraveling Orbs, which picking up an Orb of Power grants Strand weapons Unraveling Rounds, which in this case will be Quicksilver Storm. Coming down to Dragon's Bite, breaking a combatant shield with a strand or stasis weapon has a chance to suspend or freeze the combatant. Once again, we are going to be constantly suspending enemies. And then last but not least, poor Shuttle, which damaging unraveled targets with a weapon occasionally spawns a Threadling. This just adds to the damage. Now, if you're doing something, if you're going in solo, you can use solo operative. If you want to use a rocket launcher, then you can use overload rocket launchers as well. Next, for our exotic, I feel that Foe Tracer is going to be the best when it comes to this build for the Strand Hunter. And it has the intrinsic perk Relentless Tracker, which damaging a powerful combatant or guardian with an ability grants you temporary bonus to weapon damage matching your subclass type a lot of it's going to be quicksilver storm so you're going to be doing a lot more damage defeating that target with a matching uh weapon matching that damage type of your subclass creates an elemental pickup so once again continuing on with the synergy now as for the mods for the helmet, I am currently running double harmonic siphon. Now, I don't know if we will be getting any type of heavy ammo drops from killing enemies. I do know that we will be getting heavy ammo from crates. But if we do get heavy ammo from drops, then I will be switching out one harmonic siphon for a heavy ammo scout. But if it does not drop from enemies, then I'm just going to keep it the way it is. As for our arms, we are using Momentum Transfer, Impact Induction, and Grenade Kickstart, Chest, Arc Resistance, Solar Resistance, as well as Concussive Dampener. For Leg Armor, Recuperation, because it is a lot better than better already. Innervation. One Arc Weapon Surge, you can actually transfer this to a second one if you have room. Coming down to our uh, class item, I am using one Bomber, one Outreach, and then one Reaper. Now, for the stats, you want to go ahead and prioritize Resilience. Onslaught is going to be a PvE activity, so having max Resilience, even on a Hunter, over recovery is going to be a lot better than having more recovery than resilience imo so max resilience then you want to go ahead and have max discipline you want to be able to get your shackle grenades out as fast as possible even though we have other things that help regen them you constantly want to have the uptime on them and then last but not least max mobility and you want to make sure that you have these stats in that order. So resilience, discipline, then mobility. As you guys can see from this solo loss sector, enemies really don't stand a chance against you. With this build, I guarantee that you will have the ultimate crowd control and be ready for Onslaught come April 9th. 
you're going to be suspending, blinding, jolting enemies, and in the process, slowing them down from getting to your ADU. Your ADU survives, you get better gear. And that doesn't even include what your teammates are going to be um, doing in their own builds. But go ahead, try out the build, and let me know what you guys think of it. And if there is anything that you guys would change, let me know down in the comment section below. Also, do not forget, come the final shape, we will be getting 100 more vault spaces. Yeah! <laughs> and that, my friends, brings us to the end. If you're new here, feel free to subscribe to my channel, like and share the video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Hey, hey you, watch these videos too. I know you like them. Go, 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 go.